in the previous videos, we had talked about paths as powerful tools to create shapes and save them and then uh, convert them into selections as often and as many times as we want to. Here we're going to talk about how we can use channels to essentially do the same thing. What I mean is that um, once we make a, a, a new channel, um, for instance, here this red shape represents a new channel, we can turn that into a selection. And of course a selection, once we select an area, we can do any number of things to it in our image. But um, we can, as many times as we want, take a channel that we've created and select that or turn it into a selection and then go back and edit it some more and take our time and not be rushed into making selections. We can um, do this in a couple of different ways. For instance, I will start here with a, um, a selection. All right. And we can um, make a new channel. Um, in Photoshop, it's called an alpha channel. Of course, we always start out with our channels. We have our composite channel and our individual color channels, three of them if we're in RGB, four of them if we are in CMYK plus the composite channel. Okay, And any time we create a new channel, um, Photoshop gives it a fancy name and they call it an alpha channel. Well, you know, it doesn't really mean much. You can call it whatever you want. But uh, the point is, it is a, um, um, an image. Of course, it won't print um, or anything. It is a tool to manipulate your files. And again, um, we can take a, um, a channel that we've created and we can turn it into a selection as many times as we want. <clears throat> By the way, when we look at our, select, our, our channels and we turn the image off, it's a black and white animal, black and white tool. It looks just like a layer mask, doesn't it? Because it essentially is the same kind of thing. And um, uh, when we convert this into a selected shape, the black area is not the selected part of the image, and so we think of that as being the protected part of the image. In fact, the white area of the image is the part of the image that will be selected. So the white area is the unprotected or selected area, and the black part is the protected or unselected part of the um, channel unless we inverse it or do something else. And when we look at the channel just by itself, it is black and white only. When we turn on our image with it, it shows up as being red and translucent. This is so that we can see it in uh, relationship to our image um, to edit it some more. And, um, that's why you see it currently in red. This wouldn't print. This is simply indicating the shape of the, the new channel I made. And um, the uh, channel, a new channel can be made in one of two ways. First, let me just, I'll make a selection. Okay, there you have it. And I can either go to the uh, bottom of my, um, tool palette and click that little icon that's called a quick mask let me see here I want to make sure I've got my image I have a I have a selection and I will create a new a new channel and I can create that channel either from here at the bottom the bottom of my channels palette right here or 
I can quick I can click over here at the bottom of my tool palette and it will make also a channel. There's virtually no difference between these two uh, critters and um, it's very very easy to do. <clears throat> and uh, for instance again here's a selection I'll make a new channel there it is okay I can then once I have it as a channel I can drag it right down to the bottom of the channels palette and turn it into a selection so a selection into a channel a channel back into a selection and I can now make a new channel from down here and you can see they look virtually the same one called a quick mask and one called an alpha channel it makes no difference okay and once we have it we can uh, go in here and we have to make sure that it is picked in the um, uh, the channels palette but I can go in here with the painting tools and we can in fact paint to make more of the area uh, blocked out if you will or just simply change the shape of the selection because that's what we're doing these changes will be saved and when we reselect the image or convert it back into a selection again drag it right down to the bottom you see it now uh, the changes I've made are represented by the difference in the selected area I'll deselect it you can come in here and go well I did too much so let's try the eraser tool and I'll actually open it up to show more of her <clears throat> and the background and again this change is saved and now when I convert it into a selection you see that it's very different shape and I could then say okay let's um, I'm going to inverse this command shift I and I will go to the image in my layers palette okay also uh, um, you got to make sure that the composite image is chosen the, um, the the layer that I want to apply this to and here I took out the background or actually turned it into black but um, the point is is that maybe I want to take out the background maybe I just want to go in and edit the color and change the hue and saturation whatever I want to do the many different things that we might want to do with selections I can do and the point is that it will be saved um, this shape so that I can reselect it at any time as many times as I want and um, it um, gives me a very very powerful tool to manipulate uh, my images um, in the next video we're going to talk about how we can start uh, from the get-go um, from uh, creating a new channel from one of the existing channels and um, that is going to be um, something that you're going to find I think pretty fascinating because it uh, gives us the ability to um, do some pretty amazing things <coughs> with uh, um, starting from an existing channel to delicately cut her out of the background and yet save all of the details of um, her hairline okay